Oh, what a bummer. Okay, 11 minutes, 15 seconds. So we're doing chapter two, lesson one, unit rates. If you'd like to leave some room here, we're actually gonna come back later and do lesson two, complex numbers. So you might wanna leave some space here to write some more for our objective. Our essential question for the next two lessons, how are complex fractions related to unit rates? And our first part of notes is just a definition. It's just a ratio that compares two quantities with different units is a rate. So that's where we're starting. So pause it if you need to write, because I'm going to go ahead, since I'm already five minutes behind, and Miss Geyer's already mad at me for not having done this. So let's hustle. So we're going to start with a rate. So we're going to say 160 beats. This is an example. BTW. So 160 beats every two minutes. And that is a rate because we have two distinct units. Our units are different. Which by itself is not very useful to us. But what we do, the math part of this, is we can simplify so the denominator is just one unit, and then what we have is a unit rate. It's a special type of rate. So what we would need to do, we want one on the bottom, so we're just going to divide. So if we said, what is 160 divided by 2, and that gives us 80. So our unit rate here, would be 80 beats per minute, or every one minute. And that's our goal. We always want to have one as our denominator. That's our unit. And we have denominator, denominator, how to spell it, is one with the exclamation point. I was given very specific instructions that there needed to be an exclamation point and some enthusiasm. So shout it out loud. The denominator is one. Okay. That's unit rates. Basically, it's division with words attached to it. So let's do another. For next example, calculate the unit rate if it costs $2 for eight juice boxes. So you'd write a rate. If it doesn't specify, we just go in order from left to right. So we have $2 on top over 8 boxes. <gasps> I spelled it wrong. Juice boxes. Okay. So then we want to divide this to make our denominator 1. So what Guy wrote was divided by 8 and divided by 8. And then 8 divided by 8 would give us 1. And then the math bar we need to do is what is 2 divided by 8. So if we added a couple zeros, so it's a proper fraction, and we did our math, and we would get that 2 divided by 8 is 0.25. So we're left with bad dollar sign. 25 is the cost for one juice box. Or 25 cents per juice box. Oh, I'm supposed to write that. The units rates, or in this case, since it's money, unit price is 25 cents per juice box. Oof. My E's are out of control today. All right, that's the first part. Got one more example, and then we're done with this. 
because unit rate's pretty easy. Okay. It's a big thing we use them for. And in real life too, once you become an adult and money becomes a thing, we use unit rates to find the better deal. So if you go to HEB, you can look at the price tags and next to the full price, it will tell you price per ounce or price per pound. And you can use that to make informed consumer decisions. Let's call this example two. And I can't read what this says. Oh, okay. It's a little table here. Mm -hmm. Perfectly straight line. We put bag size on the left and cost on the right. So we have three different bound or three different bags of something, 40 pound bag. I'm gonna assume this is ice cream. Because I like talking about ice cream. I would like to get a 40 pound bag of ice cream. I don't know about you. We have 20 pounds for 23.44, okay. And then an eight pound bag for 9.88. So what you want to avoid is saying that the best deal is this one that's 9.88 because it's the cheapest of the three because you also have to consider how much you're getting for that cost. So we need to take all these rates of pounds to dollars and make them so that they're unit rates. So we want to know how much is it for one pound, okay? So a question we would ask ourselves is which bag has the lowest cost per pound. Which bag has? Chat's picking up and I'm getting distracted. My beard continues to grow. Kids have no class. Oh. Okay. So we want cost per pound, so we want to put costs on top, pounds on the bottom. So if we start at the top here, we have $49 for 40 pounds, bulbs. And we're just going to divide this by 40. On reality, it's 49 divided by 40. And we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to assume someone did this work for us because they did. And 49 divided by 40 is a dollar 23 per one pound. Okay. So what we're looking for is we want to see is anything lower than that. Or is our 49 dollars for 40 pounds our best deal? So we keep going. We go to our next row. We have 23.44 for 20 pounds. And then we would divide both these by 20. So again, we end up with one pound on the bottom here. That'll always be the same. I guess I should make these look like one since I put an L right next to them. So we would do 23.44 divided by 20. And I don't trust the math, so let me see. Just for fun, we can work this out. 20 goes into 23 once. Bring our decimal up, bring the 4 down. 20 goes into 34 once. 20 again. 14. Bring down the 4. 20 goes into 144, seven times. Okay, I guess she was right. So this does give us about $1.17. And we can keep going a little bit more. 
but since money only has two decimal places, going past two decimal places will at most change our answer by one cent. And one cent usually, hopefully, won't make a difference. Okay. All right, so we go to our last row. We have a new best answer, $1.17. Now we're just checking our last one. And I can almost guarantee you this won't be the answer unless this is a bad question. So 988 divided by 8 pounds. So we divide top and bottom by 8. Equals still 1 pound on the bottom. And then 988 top in, bottom out. 988 divided by 8 will give us $1.24 per pound. So once we have our three answers, then we compare. And we can say the lowest or the cheapest, oops, cost per pound oh it's dog food oh my goodness I'm reading the answer for the first time is the 20 pound bag 20 bag I'm not going to put dog food though because that's boring this is bag of ice cream If you want to put dog food, because you're afraid of mascara, you can, but I'm going to put ice cream. And then it is the bestie. And that is unit rates. Nothing to it. So once you're done, go take a break, go eat some ice cream, and then we'll come back and do complex fractions. Okay. When am I getting my homework?